So now let's focus on Bitwig's interface and get a better idea for how things are presented. Bitwig has three distinct panels. Right now we're looking at the Arrange panel. That's what this whole display is. And in the Arrange panel, our tracks are over here and they're laid out horizontally. And we have a linear timeline that flows from left to right. Above the Arrange panel, I can see there's numbers up here that are showing me what bar that I'm currently at. And if I hover my mouse above these numbers, it turns into a magnifying glass. If I want to zoom in or out, I can simply click, hold, and then drag down to zoom out, and drag up to zoom in. At the bottom of the Arrange panel, we have this bar that will allow me to do the same thing. As my mouse is hovering over it, it becomes a magnifying glass, and zooming works the same way. With my mouse inside of the Arrange panel, if you have a three button mouse or a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can use that scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. And you can click and hold it and then drag left and right to pan left and right, either in the Arrange panel or when you're looking at clips. If I press the tab button on my computer keyboard, this will bring me to one of the other panels, which is the mix panel here. In this panel, our tracks are laid out vertically and there is no linear timeline. The mix panel is highly customizable and we'll see that a little bit later in the course, but for now we're gonna keep our focus on the arrange panel. Now if I wanna switch between the two different views, I can go down to the lower left corner instead of pressing tab, and I can select which panel that I wanna see here. So I'll select arrange, and now we're back here. On the left side of the screen, this area, this is the inspector panel. And depending on what you've selected, this will show you different information about that particular thing, whether it's a track, a clip, an audio event, a note, you'll have a lot of information about that over here. If you don't need to see the inspector panel, we can hide it by going down to the lower left corner and clicking this eye. Or we can use the shortcut to hide the inspector panel, which is simply pressing the eye button on your computer keyboard. On the right side of the screen, we have our browser panel over here. And in the browser panel, we can find all of the Bitwig content, all of our effects and instruments. We can also locate all of the content from the packages that we installed from the previous video. These different icons will take us to different areas of the browser. And if we wanna find the packages that we downloaded, we can click here. We see there's packages. And now we have a ton of content that we can use courtesy of Bitwig. Thank you guys. If we don't need to see the browser, we can go down here to the bottom and we can click on this folder to hide it, and we can click on it again to show it. We can also use the shortcut to hide the browser panel, which is Option B. If you're on a Windows computer, you'll use Alt B. On the bottom of the display here, we have a panel that can change based on what it is that we actually want to look at. We see that there's four icons here, and depending on which icon is selected, that will determine what's shown down here. This first icon will bring up the Note Editor panel, so we can see the contents of a clip and be able to edit the notes or see the waveform there if it's an audio clip. The icon next to this is gonna show us the automation panel. So if we have some automation that's happening with a certain parameter, we can see that happening down here. This third icon is the device panel. All the instruments and effects in Bitwig are known as devices. So if we wanna see those devices, we have to show the device panel. The last one is the mixer panel. This is nice because now we can see our tracks laid out here. We have our mute solo and track arm button and a track fader. Now, if we don't need to see anything down here, if we don't need any of these panels, we can either click on the button that's currently selected to hide that, or we can use the shortcut associated with it. For the note editor, to show and hide that, we simply press E for editor. For the automation panel, to show and hide that, we simply press A for automation. For the device panel, to show and hide that, we press D for device. You might be noticing a trend here. And for the mixer panel, all we have to do is press M to show and hide that. Having the device panel here will be very, very helpful for us later, so I'm gonna just leave that there. Now at the top of the screen, up here, we have the toolbar. The toolbar is extremely useful because this can be customized so that you can see whatever options that you need to whenever they're relevant. Now, we have buttons here. Some of these buttons have a white triangle, and if we click on the buttons with the white triangle, this will show us a menu. Now, in this menu, we have various options, and to the right of all these different options, we have a pin. If there's a certain thing that we're gonna end up using a lot and don't wanna have to dive into a menu to find it, we can pin that thing to our toolbar. 
Now, as an example, if we look, this little button here with these lines, this will allow us to enable the groove on our various clips. I can find this option in my play menu here. So if I scroll down, groove, enable groove, and we can see this pin has been activated. If I remove this, now that icon for the groove is no longer in my toolbar. Let's say maybe I wanna pin something else to my toolbar that I think will be relevant. How about being able to overdub in my arranger? If I hit the pin here, now I see that overdub button shows up in my toolbar. This is a great way to customize this so you can quickly get to the things that you need the most. Let's get out of this menu here. So next to the play menu, we have our transport controls for play, stop, and record. This button right here will allow us to write automation in the arranger. We'll learn about that a little bit later. In this area, we have our tempo, our time signature. This is showing us where we currently are in the arrangement or in the transport. And down here, this shows us how much time has elapsed. This is a CPU meter, and we talked about buffer settings before. You wanna keep your eye on this as you start adding more and more effects and more instruments. If your CPU load is getting kinda of high, you might notice audio dropouts. If that's the case, you can either increase your buffer size or simply remove some of the content from your project. I've personally never had an issue with that in Bitwig, so hopefully you won't either. We have an icon for our metronome here, so when you're ready to start recording or playing, if you need to hear the tempo, just simply enable this. And on the right side over here, uh, we're still looking at our toolbar, but the buttons over here are more context sensitive, meaning that depending on what area of Bitwig that you're looking in, some of these icons might change. For example, let's say I select a track. Now I suddenly have a button up here that says track, and if I click this, now I have options that are relevant to working with tracks. If I select a clip, I'll see a menu for the clip. If I select a note, I'll see a menu for the note. And just like we had in the file in the play menu, we have things that can be pinned to our toolbar. So you can customize this as much as you want to.